Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, it is Matthew with another episode. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at this guy right here. A review of the Honky Tonk Man and the different toy lines that produce this character. So, uh, this particular custom uh, came from a seller on eBay. Steelers 16 uh, would be a screen name. Uh, Russell, he comes up with some pretty awesome uh, different customizations of uh, Remco figures. And uh, currently, I am bidding on a, a really awesome Crow version of Sting. And uh, I've mentioned a couple times in my videos that I am actually really looking forward to doing a, a My Favorite Remco uh, tournament with the uh, the, with the action figures and uh, and I don't want to do it unless I get a sufficient amount of customs in and uh, I'm trying to think but I do believe this is the first Remco custom I've actually purchased no I take it back it's the second one uh, the Barbarian uh, for my friend Chad uh, he did an amazing job I talked about that figure as well but because that one is so good and looks so much like the original I don't even know if I even classify that as a custom. I mean, like I said, it just looks so perfect like the like the original figure. So um, I, I pretty much bleed that right in with the original collection. But uh, so today, because I just got this figure in, I thought this would be an awesome time not only to start the Part D of the uh, Remco uh, tournament, of the of the my favorite tag team tournament, but I also wanted to do a uh, a review of the different honky tonk man figures. And you know, sometimes days like today, you know, inspire me to make certain videos. When I got the King Kong Bundy thumb wrestler in, it inspired me to do the vi the video on King Kong Bundy and all of his different action figures. Today I got this figure in, it inspired me to do the same thing. So. Sometimes you're going to have those days and uh, it hey, it helps a lot, you know. Uh, sometimes I might look around the room and uh, think, you know, well, shoot, what character can I uh, do a video on today? And uh, sometimes it just kind of lands in your lap. Uh, I have, I got five packages here. And I've already said if I have at least, you know, somewhere around five or six, you know, figures or whatnot, uh, I wouldn't really need a custom, so in that case, you know, a custom wouldn't be necessary. But I, I just wanted to show this, uh, just because I wanted to kind of give a little shout out to Russell, and uh, you know his his uh, his amazing figure. You know, he may never see this video, but you know that's okay. At least someone out there might might see his uh, might see his profile, might reach out to him, and be like, hey. You know, I saw, you know, Wally's channel and recommended your, your stuff and, uh, you know, I'm interested in getting a commission or something. I bought from him a couple times. Uh, you know, I like his stuff. So, the Honky Tonk Man, um, I'm getting, I'm trying to win the, the Sting figure and I asked him about some other customs, but uh, I, I think he's a good guy to go through for some of these. I still recommend Chad, though. Chaos Collectibles, if you want to get a really solid uh, commission for custom Remco's, I still recommend uh, Chad always. You know, if you ever watch his channel, he does amazing work on his uh, on his own figures, and you know he's going he's gonna to do awesome work for you guys too. But uh, moving on to the cream of the crop of the video, which is talking about my favorite Honky Tonk Man figures in order of my preference. So anyone tuning in for the first time with these particular videos, the only criteria is I have to own the figure. So in this case, uh, we're doing Honky Tonk Man. It's all of the different lines that have produced Honky Tonk Man. And it's, I mean, it's only five figures here. So it's not going to be a super long video. Uh, from uh, Starting at number five, is going to be a three pack. From Jack's Classic Superstars, it's the three pack of Rhythm and Blues, which gives you not only uh, Greg Valentine, but also manager Jimmy Hart. The one downside of these packages, sometimes but not always, uh, they will occasionally tell you what series uh, that box set goes to. 
like this one will say uh, collector collector series or whatnot, but or it'll say limited edition, stuff like that. Sometimes it'll actually say series twelve, series fifteen, or whatnot, but very rare. And I, I I despise that. It just helps you so much when it tells you series one, series two, series thirty five, or whatnot. Um, yeah, you can always look on the back of the box to see who else you need from that particular particular series, but it would really help if you knew what series particular you were in. When I first saw these box sets, I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, the first one I actually bought was the three-pack of Nikolai Volkov, King Kong Bundy, and the Iron Sheik. And because I fell in love with that box set, I wanted all of these figures on, on in, in package. But I had no idea how many of these figures they actually produced. And I figured, you know what? They're not Hasbro. They're not LJN. There is no reason why figures like this would sell for a fortune. But yeah, you're, you're going to pay up, you know, hundreds of dollars for certain packages. And for certain others, yeah, you're, you're probably going to find some in the thousand range. A couple thousand even. So, there are rarities. In package, they all look amazing. Love the design of all these. I mean, I love the jumpsuit that Honky Tonk Man is in. But because I've seen Honky Tonk Man in blue so often, it's that one kind of pushed it back a little bit for me. So I put this one at number five. Now, even though this one is a single pack, I pushed it to number four only because he is in a black jumpsuit and it gives that more of a unique feature. Plus, I, I like the fact that he actually has a championship belt where the other one doesn't. So that's a, a nice feature as well. Plus, he still comes with his guitar accessory, so you're not losing that feature at all. And does this one tell you which series? Nope. Oh, but it does. Collector Dairy uh, Series 19. No, it looks like number 14. So this one helps because it actually tells you Series 14 at the top. So just kind of looking at the back here. Uh, da Dallas Simon Page, Honky Tonk, Abdullah the Butcher, Bob Backlund, Rick Martell. I have those. I don't believe I have Steve Austin. I don't think I have Smash. I think I might have X. Ultimate Warrior, I'm not sure. I might be missing Ultimate Warrior. Uh, I have Mean Gene. I have Sensational Sherry. So, occasion, I would love to do reviews of the Jax Classic Superstars. There are a lot of series that I have complete, but there are a lot of series where, you know, there's an absolute ton of characters. And I might have like 6 out of 8, 8 out of 10, 8 out of 12, something like that. So, because I'm not complete, and you know with my OCD, I have to have the complete set or else it's not worth doing. Um... That's the reason why I never got around to doing it. But uh, this really is an awesome figure for display on, on card and package. For me, I just wouldn't get the same enjoyment of figures like this out of the package. That's why I consider myself strictly a mint on card collector. If I were to buy these loose at one point... I don't know. I just, I just don't. Wouldn't get the same enjoyment, same pleasure out of it that I would if they were, if they were out of the package. Problem is, if I were to take everything out of the package and have everything loose, I would save about sixty to eighty percent of space in this room because everything is carded and all the shelves are so full because everything is in package that takes up so much space, but. Uh, they just look so good in the package, though. <laughs> but, uh, Honky Tonk Man, uh, Jack's Classic Superstar Series 14 uh, with a black jumpsuit uh, would be my number four favorite figure that I own. Because this is very reminiscent, so I like this figure for two reasons. One, it's very reminiscent to the uh, Remco line, but... It does give you that uh, LJN Wrestling Superstars flavor as well. So it's kind of like a, a two-in-one with this figure. And uh, it's one of those things that Mattel, I think, actually did right. 
so it's the Mattel Superstars. And this was the Series 1 release. I think they actually say Series 1 on here, if I'm not mistaken. And it doesn't say Series. I thought that they did. Oh, yes, it does. It's on the back. So they give you the series number on the top back corner. So it is a beautiful looking figure. Like I said, the, the card backing itself gives you that LJ and Wrestling Superstars kind of a look to it. But the figure itself is, is you know, like a, like a Remco body type. They were selling maybe a dozen of these or so. You know, probably series one, two, maybe three mixed in or so on auction. And it was at about a hundred bucks or so. You know, if I was in my buying stage where I was, you know, a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, I would have jumped in that. I probably would have paid up to two fifty on it because I could have said I had all the figures loose and then all the carded ones. But man, right now I'm pretty much at a point where I really have to monitor my spending and uh, pay down some bills. So. I really can't spend the way that I have been, and it sucks. Right now, I'm I'm basically spending just to 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 save, if that makes sense. I'm buying things for for resale essentially. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful figure. I mean, I would love to actually sit to take this out of the package to see what it actually looks outside, but. I could go on eBay, probably buy this loose for ten, fifteen dollars. But I mean, at fifteen dollars, you're you're basically paying full price of what a card figure would have cost, and, and then shipping is another ten dollars or something. So it just ain't worth it. But uh, the superstars from Mattel, I, I think this is the one line that Mattel did really well, and I don't give Mattel a lot of credit because a lot of their stuff. Just not great. With all of their posable arms and stuff, I'm not a fan. But, again, with this particular figure, yeah. With, with, with this line, I'm, I'm ecstatic about. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, that was number three. Coming in at number two is the LJN Wrestling Superstars Honky Tonk Man. So... I'm different from a lot of other people in the sense that I don't mind when action figures or when wrestlers are clothed. I know a lot of people, they want wrestlers in their fighting gear or their in-ring gear. Essentially, they're they're wearing pants only or or trunks only. They don't want them to be like the like the million dollar man or the honky tonk man, stuff guys like that where they're where they're wearing clothes. To me, the clothes gives it an extra look, extra design. It brings more to the figure. I love it. The figure has an awesome pose. And the best thing about the uh, LJNs, the size is amazing. But here's the thing about the LJNs. Because you're looking at an 8-inch figure, I might say, well, Hasbro has my favorite figures, right? But at 4 inches, it's so hard to say that I like an a four inch figure better than an eight inch figure and it sucks because the size because hasbro is what i grew up with right so but the size man the, the size difference is amazing mm. plus this this particular figure on card uh is also one of the most valuable pieces you don't have to find, you know, your Series 6 black cards. You're like Hacksaw Jim Duggan, your Hulk Hogan, your white or red shirt, your Honky Tonk Man. Um, pretty much any of your Series 5 figures are going to be just as valuable and just as expensive as your your Series 6 figures. So, um, uh, get in there. Uh, look how beautiful that figure is. Trying to get you up close and personal. And I think I talked about this in the past with the Honky Tonk Man having the Hulk Hogan uh, bio card on the back. Oof. This not a regular chair, so I always got to like kind of lean forward on this little armrest thing here. But it doesn't allow me to sit straight up and hurts my back. Ugh. 
so Honky Tonk Man, LJN, I, I still classify Hasbro as being my favorite line, but the LJN figures on card are a million times, I covet them a million times more than I covet the Hasbro on card. So, that's saying something. And of course, there's only one left, and that is going to be the Hasbro version of the Honky Tonk Man. So, this one has a couple of features I like. Not only is the feet, does the figure come with the uh, guitar accessory, but there's also like this little card. I don't know if you can see it in the background, just behind the figure. So that's pretty awesome. It's like a, like what, what do you call them, hologram or holographic uh, cards or something. So that's pretty nice. So, the reason I love this figure more than the LJN, the LJN, you put the guitar in the hand, it'll stay in the hand if it's stationary. With this figure, you put the guitar in the hand, you sit there and you wave that thing back and forth crazy like this, that guitar will not move. It'll stay in his hand no matter what you do. You throw that thing in a tornado, that guitar will stay in his hand. <laughs> Uh, this figure I had as a kid, um, one of my oldest figures that I can remember having, absolutely loved the figure. I think I have him on my list as like number nine as my all-time favorite action or Hasbro figure. And yeah, it's because of the overall design, because of the accessory, because of the arm pose. This right here is the perfect arm pose. You know, the arm's just straight out, you know? Not like you're... Crush or Scott Steiner with this big extra arm arm like this and then extra arm like this Or the stupid Ric Flair and, and Rick Rue or like, like no He's got the perfect arm pose um, As far as value a million percent I'll take the LJN version on card over this or even loose I'll take the LJN version over this but as far as playability and what you can do with the accessory, nothing beats this. This is it. This is the ideal figure. I thought I had a whole lot more Honky Tonk Man figures. I was looking around the room. I'm like, really? That's it? Maybe that's because I'm so used to like having all of these different LJN custom Honky Tonk Man figures. I mean... Let's see, I got two Honky Tonk Man figures right there. I got another Honky Tonk Man I bought from Wrestling Writer that's due in with the whole bundle that's probably going to be coming in uh, first or second week of June. Um, that's only two Honky Tonk Man figures, but I know I have more. Oh, there's a third one right there. So, I buy Honky Tonk Man LJN Customs like crazy. Yeah, I thought I had more, but... Well, uh, that is the review of my favorite Honky Tonk Man figures made by different uh, different manufacturers. And uh, who will I do next? As of right now, I don't know. It just kind of comes to me on the spot. <laughs> uh, once I complete this video, I am going to start doing round two of the My Favorite Tag Team Tournament. And we are going to return to the LJNs, which is something I've been super excited about doing. Uh, the last video I did with the Rumpkos, we only had six tag teams, so that only took up one video. And uh, I don't know. Two videos for the Galoob, one video for Remco. In round two, I might have to just skip both of those and just... You do LJN and Hasbro in round two and then save them for like round three or something. Maybe do Galoob in round two because that, no. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see how when I finally complete the Hasbro portion of round two, I'll, I'll see where I'm at with, with the, uh, with the remaining competitors and make my decision then. I don't, I don't want to make uh, any choices too early. But yeah, I'm going to dive into that LJN tournament next. And uh, 
That way I have them posted this week sometime. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, hopefully this was enjoyable, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.